I, I mean, I'm glad. I'm glad no one was like, well, this isn't very interesting to listen to, but let's talk about it anyway. I hate this. I'm going to share it now. <laughs> Enjoy this hot garbage. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to episode 142 of Rhythm Encounter, the RPG Fan Music Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Salvato. Uh, happy to say that I'm feeling much better than last time. So I, I sound normal today, which is not something I realized I would appreciate as much until, you know, after the last episode we recorded. So uh, I'm happy to be here and feeling good again. Um, and but before we get into our topic, let me introduce who else I'm here with. Uh, joining me today is Hillary. Hello. Hello. Happy to have you back on here. Oh, yeah, it has been a while, hasn't it? At least a few episodes. Yeah. Good to be here. Uh, you know who has been here recently is Pat. Yay. Yeah, <laughs> we're rocking out. Yeah, and Audra is here again as well. Hello. Hello. All right, so this is most of our panel from the PSP episode a couple weeks ago, <laughs> uh, although we're talking about a very, very different topic today. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure it, we hadn't fully settled on a title for this, but I think I'm actually going to use the title that Hillary suggested in, in our Slack. <laughs> so most likely this episode may, may go up as Seize the Artifact for Tallness, which explains nothing. No. Nope. Anyway, so our thought today on this episode was there are so many RPG soundtracks out there with great music and sometimes very, very strange song titles. So we thought it'd be really fun to go through and pick some of our favorite strangest titles, but still music that we enjoy and want to talk about. So that that is the theme today. Uh, there was no other restrictions, you know, console, composer, anything. As long as it had a title that was just kind of off or strange or interesting, uh, it was fair game. And you will definitely see that reflected musically in the episode. We've got a wide variety of genres and music types. That's true. And yeah. even song lengths. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to this one. Th this is another one of those topics where... I, I'm going to ask everyone, like, what drew you to this episode, unless it's really just like, I don't know, it sounded weird and interesting, because that's what drew me to it. So I don't have a long or a very interesting answer. Like, that was my reasoning. How about anyone else? I'm always drawn to, you know, a good, like, humor-oriented episode, so I thought this had potential to be fun, funny. Um, I know I'm usually one of the first to joke about strange song titles, um, I think the one I keep mentioning is, no, no, I don't die, no, uh, which is actually also from the, one of the games I brought today. Oh, yes. But did not bring that one, but I appreciate um, song titles, whether it's, you know, just kind of like entertaining, interesting because of the translation, or if someone just came up with something like particularly clever or insightful. So excited to talk about it. Yeah, my reasoning is pretty similar. I just like the idea of talking about some fun song titles, basically. Yeah, for me, it was more of a challenge. Like, I saw the the episode concept and I was like, what, like, what's the craziest thing I could bring? <laughs> and like, like racking my brain, like, like, there are some goofy, crazy song titles out there. I immediately had a list of like 20 and I was like, all right, I got to <laughs> narrow this thing down and narrowed it down to two and then three and then two again, kind of all over the place. And so, yeah, I joined it because I was like, oh, this is a personal challenge. What's the <laughs> weirdest song title uh, with songs that I actually like? That's that is an important oh, point. Oh, yes. Because there were a few I, I was like, oh, that's a weird song title. And then I played it, it was basically just like ambient noise for two minutes. And I was like, no, <laughs> no. Yeah. That's so, fair. Yeah. Yeah, I came across a few of those too where I'm like, oh, that that's a great title and it's funny, but not as interesting musically as what I ended up on. So I guess we could say that's kind of like the one parameter we all maybe imposed upon ourselves is it has to be something we'll at least still enjoy or want to share. 
I, I mean, I'm glad. I'm glad no one was like, well, this isn't very interesting to listen to, but let's talk about it anyway. I hate this. I'm going to share it now. <laughs> Enjoy this hot garbage. <laughs> ah. All right. So wh- how do we end up breaking these up anyway? What, what was our... Hillary and I talked about this a lot, about how, how to do our, our blocks today. Yeah, we were thinking kind of like musically similar at first, but then we realized we had a wide array so I said something about finding maybe different themes that weren't exactly musical. We noticed some of them were kind of stories that took place in like a little bit more modern setting. Yeah. So they're, they're, Some were like sci-fi. Yeah. So the, our episode today is vaguely structured around like setting and theme of the games. But it's, it's a little loose, but that's okay. We got to do something to try to like combine these strange things. Right? Oh, yeah. Very true. Yeah. So let's let's get to our first block then. Uh, we're starting with Pat. Pat, what is your first oddly titled song? I brought um, a sunbaked throb from E7. <laughs> That's a good one. Yep. Um, and then Hillary, our, our title track of this episode. <laughs> yes, our potential title track. Uh, I brought Seize the Artifact for Tallness from Eternal Sonata. Awesome. Let's go listen to a sunbaked throb and seize the artifact for tallness.
All right, folks. Uh, there they were, two fantastic pieces of music. Um, so I want to start by talking about Sunbaked Throb. That was the first one you heard. That's uh, sort of a field and battle theme uh, later in the storyline of East 7. Um, for some reason, I had it in my head that this song was used in East 8, and then I went back and listened to it, and I was like, no, no, this is 7. And I looked it up, and yes is seven not eight i don't know what's wrong with me with that but well, as, given, uh, given eight setting I, I can see why you might think that yeah yeah it's like you're on you're on the, like sunshine coast and you're like ah, oh, it's hot out here yeah and then here comes the sun baked throb which again what what do i do with that song title i it makes me feel uncomfortable uh <laughs> throb is just not a word you want in uh your music i feel uh, like it's one of those words that just kind of like triggers a reaction it, yes. Yes. People, it really yeah. is it really is hanging out over in the corner with moist yep, yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 throb and moist are just <laughs> stay out of my song titles um i feel like pulse might have been better if i could like rename this song um there's a there's certainly a pulsating like yep uh nature to the beat uh it's a little more up tempo than um, some of the other tracks on this OST, um, but yeah, it's just—I uh, mean, as far as Falcom stuff goes, I mean, it's very, uh, very much in line with what makes East music good, in my opinion. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's Falcom, baby. Uh, so it's great music. I can definitely follow the sun-baked piece. It's like, all right, we're in a hot area. And then Throb, I just want to replace with Pulse, because, yes, it has the moist factor. And <laughs> there's there, there's just an uncomfortable, maybe innuendo piece of this that just makes me, gives me the heebie-jeebies. But the music itself, if someone didn't tell me the title of the song, I'd just be like, oh, yeah, great Falcon music. Um, as for, and I know, Hillary, you're going to get to the context, because I don't know the yes, context at all. I do have some. <laughs> that's exciting. But Seize the Artifact for Tallness, I mean... Can we just agree this is, you know, classic Motoi Sakuraba, uh, but ch but with one distinction, often his battle themes, certainly up to this point in time in his career, um, and this was what, 09 or 08, 09, maybe 2010, um, PS3 generation. Um, he would often make it so that his... Uh, town and environment themes had more of the orchestral uh, timbre to it, yep. and then his battle themes would be like a prog rock band. Yeah, oh, and, and then and very layered, very like almost yeah, a bit and of a then, cacophony. Yeah. Now this, this, uh, however, uh, he keeps the the sort of frenetic pace of the prog rock sound, but he brings in all the instrumentation of orchestra. Uh, which is something that if you listen to um, older works of his, you know, uh, first three Star Oceans, uh, both Valkyrie profiles, uh, a lot of the early Tales of games, he didn't do this. Uh, so doing this sort of majestic battle theme that has the orchestral stuff that makes it feel like bigger and more important uh it feels really good. I remember him doing it with the Baten Kaitos games, mm -hmm. but I think this track uh, is just extra good. It's very cohesive and coherent, which is something that I like about it. That is despite that... the title of the song, <laughs> right? That is actually exactly how I would describe it. And the sound, the Eternal Sonata soundtrack as a whole, it's definitely on the cohesive and coherent um, side. And I, I wonder if. I'm guessing part of that might be the subject matter, you know, with you're dealing with Chopin, you're dealing with, with like classical musical kind of themes and symbols and you know, everyone is named after a music term. So maybe since this is just intended to be such a musical game, it's interesting to think, you know, well, maybe they wanted to have a more consistent kind of like orchestral kind of musical quote sound to it. Yeah, yeah I really... I really like this track a lot. I I appreciate the fact that we get a really fast-paced battle track with those kind of orchestral instruments. Um, and 
you know, I think you don't lose as much of the drama as you would you would think, at least in my opinion. And I think it it pairs well with the East track, which also has a really consistent sound, I think, with some really nice kind of like call outs and chromatics that kind of pin it as kind of like a hot or desert area. So I don't know. I like these two together a lot as well. Um, and the context behind CZ Artifact for Tallness, which I should probably say right now before I forget. Um, so this is actually uh, in not exactly a bonus area, but kind of. It is a pirate ship, actually. And one of the characters, the artifact, is a pirate hat. Huh. And ah. she wants to seize it to appear taller. Uh, <laughs> is this a really tall hat, or what is it? I mean, you know, it's like a big... Well, yeah. Yeah, they stand up kind of big. Yeah, yeah. So... <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. <laughs> I, so I was really picturing something more, more like stilts or, stilts or something. I don't know. <laughs> a big old pair of platform shoes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> platform pirate boots or something. Okay. It's a pirate that, hat. It's a pirate That's hat. That's kind of fantastic. <laughs> I, I, I'm glad I didn't know that. Till I now. had that no idea. so much yeah. more fun. Mm -hmm. I kind of wish I had known this sooner so that I could just throw this into the pirates episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I unintentionally picked another pirate song. Sort it's of. an honorary pirate song. Yeah. yeah, and it's like you know, this is this is kind of your standard JRPG kind of like menacing kind of ghost pirate ship that shows up sometimes, and it's not a. I don't think it's like a completely required area, but it makes things easier if you do it and get through it. I was definitely a big fan of the strings in this one. Yeah. Uh it's it's just so. It, I thought for sure listening to it because of just like the level of like intensity and drama. Like originally I was writing, I was like, oh, this must be a battle theme. And you're like, no, no, it isn't. <laughs> um, which, which is fun because it's we get so used to certain sound, you know, associating certain sounds with certain things in RPGs. Yeah, would, it, if you didn't know the context, I mean, that's definitely what I thought this was. But yeah, it's like I, an area, right? I actually need to clarify whether it's because it was actually kind of hard to find specific information of what this, of whether this was like special battles on the ghost ship or just the ghost ship. So it might. Oh, it might be a battle theme. Yeah. Either way, it's on a ghost ship. It is on a ghost ship. Yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, the E's song, um, you know, between the the title of the song, of course, um, and then the habit, you know, a, a lot of musicians have of using especially in like video games and RPGs, using like certain types of instruments to convey certain settings, like a desert setting. Um, you know, I, I definitely get the, a, a hot uh, vibe from this one. Uh, I think it's the instruments, and I'm not really sure what exactly kind of drum we're meant to be hearing here. You, you looked it up, Hillary. Um, I, I forgot what, I hope you wrote it down. <laughs> because we looked it up. And... I remember. It sounded uh, not quite I can't 100% say, but it sort of feel like it was maybe meant to have kind of like a tabla drum kind of feel. Tabla drum, okay. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. The, the pitch shifting that you can hear in it is mm -hmm. very like Central Asia. A lot of countries in that region use drums like this. Right. It is some sort of pitch shifting drum, but it, I couldn't quite pin it as like specifically a tabla drum or... Gotcha, gotcha. I mean, I, I really wanted to just like call that out specifically because like that was the star of the song for me. Like that really is what like set the the tempo and the the mood of the song so it was a lot of fun and again like i can i can definitely see because of the setting and because of like the vibes and the feel you get from this like why you, you could easily think that this might be from ease eight yeah it also reminds me of the track from our oh geez workout episode that was years ago oh yeah at this point that was a that was a falcon a yeast beach song oh shoot yeah which song was that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look that up while Audra talks about the stuff. <laughs> oh, well, I was just saying, I just kind of, I love this pairing. I think both songs are excellent, and I love the instrumentation, especially in the Eternal Sonata one. But oh, good. You can't really argue with the good Falcom song, even with strange titles. Yeah, I would put these two on a playlist together. Mm -hmm. They're both high energy. All right, so episode 53 of Rhythm Encounter, our workout episode did feature Sunshine Coastline from Sunshine East Coast. Yeah, I had a feeling that's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. Yep. Okay. Because that is think, a good workout song. <laughs> yeah. I think that was 
Salosi's pick, so thanks. I yeah, that sounds right. I'm gonna I mean, of course, if, if you're listening and want to check it out, you can of course go find episode fifty. That was that was a but fun episode. It was. It I was. recommend it. <laughs> but I'm just gonna make it easy for everyone and put a link in our show notes for it. Yay, all right. So I don't know if you wanted to work out to this block, you could enjoy the, the titles and also work out. Exactly. Are we ready to talk about our shopping and slaughter block? I Yes. <laughs> should I should I reveal actually I did not say why out of all the like wild Sakuraba song titles. Oh. This one stood out particular to me particularly to me. I meant to start my description with, hi, I'm five feet tall and I want to seize the artifact for tallness. So yes, <laughs> as, a short, as a short person. I, I thought you were, but like I wasn't going to make you reveal that or talk about it. <laughs> no, I'm good. Okay. Well, we have to get you a big pirate hat then, I guess. Yeah, there we go. All right. Well, maybe we can go shopping. Ah, uh, yeah. And, find one. And, and, and laugh about forgetting to buy one. Yes, exactly. All right, so our next block is starting with Audra. So what's your first song? My first song is Holy Death Strike of Slaughter from Code of Princess. No time for subtlety on that one, huh? Nope. <laughs> nope. Um, and then after that, my first song today is When We Laugh About Forgetting to Buy Something from Atelier Ryza 3. <laughs> so let's go listen to Holy Death Strike of Slaughter and When We Laugh About Forgetting to Buy Something. What a mouthful.
well, when I first decided to join this podcast, I knew I was going to probably bring on a Code of Princess song because that game is so ridiculously over the top in how it handles a lot of things that I figured that a lot of their soundtrack titles would be also a bit interesting. And I was quite right. But I settled on the final boss theme, Holy Death Strike of Slaughter, because it's just, it's a really fun one to say. Yeah. And it's, the instrumentation is great in it. I mean, it's just, I love how it starts off and you can get really like the sense of the holy and almost like peaceful. And then it kind of brings in the death and the strike and the slaughter. That is, which that is, is oh, which is ahead. fitting for actually the princess character in the game. She's actually very, she's peace loving, but then she also can slaughter things with the best of them. So it's just, it's a really fitting song for the game. And I just kind of love the, it's a fun title, but it's also a really fun final boss theme. I think it's a great action RPG theme. Yeah, I, I really appreciate that kind of tie in with the game and the context and the character specifically, because mm -hmm. I, one of the things I noticed about it is it, and there, there are, this is kind of a trend for many song titles do this, but kind of the fascinations with opposites and the juxtaposition, right? You have the holy and then the rest is just death. <laughs> yes. And, and that's true of a lot of like JRPG characters, right? A lot of them wrestle with that kind of theme of, you know, a lot of the games revolve around fighting, but you were supposed to be a hero. And mm -hmm. so it's, it's just seeing it shortened into a song title like this yeah. is entertaining, but telling and something that you, you definitely see here and there. I agree. And I just kind of, I love the Adelia Riza music, and I haven't heard much, many songs from the third game in particular, but I just love how cheerful it is. And it's kind of like a thing of the title you can almost look at it and be like, oh, it's something you can laugh. It is something you can laugh about. Like the instrumentation's just that light and energetic and cheerful. And I kind of just love that about that piece. Yeah, we actually haven't really had much... I don't know if we've had anything from any of the Ryza games, uh, which is one of the reasons I, I did it, because I have several soundtracks for earlier games in this series, and there's a lot of great choices. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I'm not as familiar with these three, so that's why I started looking into those. So, and I'm glad I did, because there really are a lot of great songs in there. Um, you know, the, those soundtracks, uh, just the series in general, are, are so full of like super literal songs like I am doing alchemy or, or something <laughs> like that. Look, I did it. Uh, which like are funny on their own. You know what I'm going to say now, right? What? Wow. You've done it. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Star <laughs> Tropics reference. Um, and then you have, have things like, like this one, uh, one that I've brought on the show before, uh, the sound of leaves rubbing my back. Uh, I forget if that was from Theorist or Sophie. That is so specific. It is. It's very specific. Uh, that one's on episode 46, by the way. But um, just the the series, like, the composers, like, they're so good at conveying this, like, jaunty, like, happy sound. And um, this one has, like, such, like, warm and cozy, like, uh, strings, even though it's an uh, overall, it's a really, like, cool, upbeat sound. Um, I'm guessing by the title, it's probably some town theme or like a town event theme uh, with characters literally shopping. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't know why they even titled it this. <laughs> um, but it's just fun. Like it, knowing, you know, playing these games and knowing how the, what the settings are like, like it, it really fits just the feel and the atmosphere of those games. So it, it was a lot of fun. And I just, Hillary and I were both going through this one and we kept going back and laughing at this title. So I was like, all right, this, this has to be the one from this game, even though there's a lot of great choices. I appreciate, I appreciate you bringing it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then uh, a little bit on Code of Princess, uh, which I don't know much about it, uh, despite it's like semi-recent remake. Um, uh, I don't know a lot about Code of Princess besides the fact that I wish the protagonist had a better armor design. Um, Most of the characters wish she did too. It's <laughs> actually like a really 
funny in-game joke. Okay, you know what? All right. Well, credit to them then for at least <laughs> acknowledging that. Um, but like, I was not expecting. Uh, you know, I don't. I'm not saying Falcom has the market cornered on like you know rock and stuff and games, but it maybe because we were listening to E's and we we're talking about Falcom. But I got so, sort of a Falcom vibe from this one. Uh, it's such a cool boss theme. Once I realized, of course, that this is by Ace, it, it clicked a little bit more for me mm. uh, because then I was like, oh, okay, well, now it's I can. Blade. Yes, <laughs> I, like, I can really see some of the sound in, like, in future Xeno games that they would do later. But uh, no, great choice. Uh, really one of my few exposures to this game. So I'm glad you brought it. It was fun. Thank you. Yeah, it's kind it's of fun. a good, like, fantasy parody yeah. story. Okay. A fantasy parody. Huh. I can see it. It's really interesting hearing a little bit more about, you know, these games, how both tracks have these different components that really create an atmosphere. Like Code of Princess Song, you can see some of these kind of like fancy, holy trappings, like the piano, the bell, the fact that you do have like the rock and electric guitar, but what it's playing kind of has a, a baroque, baroque kind of cadence to it. So it's kind of got these like fancy trappings, but it's still very much like a driving battle song. I I think I wrote in my notes that I was picturing like giant mobs of enemies rather than a boss. But oh, yeah, similar similar feel. And then you know, Riza, it does it less with instrumentation, but it's still with the way it kind of can the phrasing and the way it constructs the melody. You do still get that very very strong scene. That sense of place. I really like a lot. I, I wrote that it feels like walking down a busy street on a day that you have set aside for shopping or exploring. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I think that's a good way to describe it. Maybe even like just laughing with friends and hanging out. Yeah, exactly. I guess one of us should probably play this game and confirm this. <laughs> like it's, it's nothing to do with this at all. It's killing me because... Um, you know, people who have followed what I've written on the site uh, and the longevity there. Um, I've always loved the Atelier series, both the games and their soundtracks. And I have yet to touch the entire Rise of Trilogy, and it is a mark of shame upon me. Um, I had to guess these are probably music that plays when you uh, enter, like, a side quest with another character. It's this sort of like um a lot of the later attire games essentially have quest lines that are kind of like social link building in the persona games mm. yeah um uh. so the idea that like a lot of these interactions take place within the town in the market square and that you might have be having such a good time with your friends that hey you don't ever actually get around to buying stuff <laughs> that's how i'm imagining it in my head yep uh, yeah. relatable yeah. actually <laughs> yeah, I've definitely done that. Yeah. Um, and I, th so yeah, again, the specificity of song titles is really great. I really appreciate you citing the the one from, yeah, I think it was Sophie, the the Sound of Leaves Russian. No, I looked it up. It actually was Ferris. It was Ferris? Okay. <clears throat> My bad. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, the very specific language and how the music fits the language i think is really cool i do think that with the length of the title it makes me think of like this current trend with manga and anime oh of like oh, no. stupidly oh, yeah, long titles like my boyfriend titles. is a level 100 dragon <laughs> so now we're gonna marry <laughs> it's like that's the title <laughs> of your whole thing except something went wrong except something went wrong yeah and, and our parents and, don't approve <laughs> and also my story. best friend went missing <laughs> yes. wow and also that's about right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so goodness. I uh, I want that trend to stop. <laughs> yeah, and I think a lot of people do too. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I think I hope it ends soon. But it it's it's humorous uh, in small doses, and I liked it with this title. Yeah. Um, musically, I'll note for our music theory fans out there, um, the song the. First portion, if you break it into an A side and B side, the A side is really avoiding resolution. It's really lingering on yep. 
four and then five. So it's just sort of four, five, maybe a little minor six. And then in the B side, which we could think of almost like a verse chorus thing, you're doing a lot of resolution back to one, but still focusing on four. You'll go four to one or maybe four, five, one. And when we hold that four, five, um, there's still motion, like they're swaying, but the lack of resolution kind of allows for, like, it just gives chill vibes, uh, if you will. Um, there's a brightness to using a, a four or subdominant chord, uh, but the way it's held here, and then with like an of like the chord structure doesn't have a lot of movement, but then you have tons of movement in terms of the melody being fast and vibrant, yep. and like the violin is just kick like always killing it on these <laughs> tell your soundtracks. Mm -hmm. um, it it uh it really does uh present uh like really a good um this town is not boring kind of vibe uh like like you can relax here but it's not lame and that's <laughs> actually like if you as a composer are tasked with writing this kind of music you really have to know what tools to reach for if you don't want to screw it up um there's a lot of like if you go back to the like especially like the ps1 and ps2 get days there are a lot of game soundtracks where these kinds of town themes are just really built around peaceful but not with this kind of energy so it results in just boredom um, or it kind of stagnates yeah mm -hmm. yeah and the italian series has managed to consistently make in my opinion town themes some of the best music um and i think it's this sort of knowledge about how to write uh that makes it so good so i really did like this song a lot and it makes me think i really need to just buckle down and like if not play the whole trilogy at least go through the three soundtracks because holy crap that was a good song yeah. um <laughs> the first game is really good i need to play the other two yeah i've heard nothing but good things from people who've played the games and i have uh, I've played everything up till. Uh, I didn't play Lulua, and there might have been another fourth game that someone released somewhere other than <laughs> Lulua. Because Lulua was like a fourth game tacked on to... Um, uh, what is that trilogy? Um, the Arlen trilogy. Oh, yeah. um, and I think they might have done another fourth game recently. Uh, and then they did the remake of the very first game, which I haven't played that either. That looks really cute, you know. I know. I really want to play it. And with Kumitani Oka doing the remade soundtrack, I really want to hear that too. I need yeah. to just listen to that soundtrack both. And yeah. I think that you identified exactly the uh, the musical elements that I, that I think I was picking up on when I was thinking of, like, the crowd. And I think that that's... that those chords and that kind of lack of re resolution is how you kind of get the feeling of like, oh, well, my objective of shopping wasn't quite accomplished. Not quite resolution, but it's still chill and peaceful. <laughs> yeah. I think if you want to find this, that particular sort of chord progression and movement in other soundtracks, I think there are a lot of tracks on uh, Sweet Code in 2 and 3 uh, that have something like this. So if you want to look for something older that does it right, in my opinion, that kind of grabs this uh, i was just thinking in my head uh oh, yeah, yeah. I can see that. two and three had a couple songs like this that really did this kind of we're gonna hold but we're still gonna be interesting right um yeah oh i didn't talk about code of princess uh ace is a great sound team and uh this proves it uh <laughs> right Bef before we were all jamming out to uh all the xenoblade stuff like they I think even before Code of Princess, they also did like an MMO soundtrack. I can't remember which one. And yeah. that was really good, too. Um, yeah, this is a good final battle theme. Um, I do like the, the very obvious juxtaposition of, all right, we're doing a piano solo and that's that's our sacredness. And then we kick butt and that's our uh, death, <laughs> death strikes strikes and slaughter, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. which is it's just this sort of overkill language, um, which I think, like you said about it being like, a parody kind of story Audra like that mm -hmm. language just fits very well and it's just sort of over the top and uh yeah yeah it's a great battle theme right yeah it's just it's solid and I think you know Mike you had said 
you know, bef before you knew it was Ace, you're like, you know, this could have been a Falcon battle theme, yeah. which, like, that totally fits. I could very well hear this in, like, Felgana or, um, like, East Origin. Like, this song is just, yeah, super, super good, super rocking. Yeah. Uh, Emil Chronicle Online was yeah. the MMO, uh, something I've never heard of until this day. Which but I think I've written a review but, of that soundtrack. Yes, because I'm looking on VGMDB and there's one review list linked in, of course, it's for us. Yeah. Uh, so there you go. <laughs> yeah. They also they also did uh Fantasy Life, which I did not realize. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Huh. Um all right. I think we should move on to our next block. I did want to mention really quick though, because when when Audra said that Code of Princess had a lot of good titles, I did look it up while you were talking about that and uh you you are correct uh you were the, hillary you were laughing at one which one were you laughing at? i was laughing as shall i curse you question mark <laughs> yeah i did i love the idea of, of asking someone uh-huh you, you want to curse now the amazing <laughs> mr t come see my discounts <laughs> that's a good one too yeah now it's for real yeah yeah, that would have been. Uh, I would have had a hard time choosing just based on titles. The yeah, those are good ones. The meaning yeah. of tears. Oh boy! All right. Ooh. Um, I think we are ready to move on to block three. How about you? Yeah. Cool. Sure. All right. Well, we're starting with you again, Hillary. Yep. It's it's on in this block because we are looking at some slightly more sinister music, um, and my choice for this is from Shadows Over Loathing, uh, a soundtrack that is very near and dear to me. And the song title is, it's on like Necronomicon. God, it's one of my favorite titles. Um, and Audra, what is your second song? My second song is Fish Force from Penny Arcade's On the Rain Slick Precipice of Darkness, episode four. Now, did you bring this because the song title is ridiculous or because the game title is ridiculous? <laughs> because it works on both A levels. A little both. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. Let's go listen to It's On Like Necronomicon and Fish Force. Thank you. 
feelings to our very core. Heroism is out the door. Saving people isn't what we do. We hold our monsters to the sky. <laughs> <laughs> When they open, you will cry. Cause monsters will pour out. All right. So first I will start off by saying that I love many of Ryan Ike's song titles. Um, and I chose this song. I'll get a little more into the game in the context later, but I chose this song mostly because I wanted to show off some of his kind of goofy, but very clever titling that he's done, especially for the, for the loathing series. Um, It's really kind of on display in Shadows Over Loathing, and this is a very, very good example. So, um, as is expected, this is a battle um, kind of music. It plays in tense situations. <clears throat> It and Shadows Over Loathing, basically the premise is it's 1920s style. It's a little bit satire, tongue in cheek. It takes place in you know, kind of the roaring 20s. So you have like plays on Agatha Christie mysteries and lots of jazz stuff happening. You have a large amount of 1920s slang. And so it's kind of hard to imagine what kind of music you should go with this. And to go along with that, uh, an appropriate kind of enemy, sort of like a force working against you, um, is the sort of like unknowable, Lovecraftian kind of like elder horror type thing, uh, which is reflected in the game. Your chosen protagonist gets a letter from their uncle who um, runs an antique shop, but it's really a front for uncursing cursed artifacts that he finds and uh, he has gone missing. And depending on how you play the game, you can get more or less into the kind of like Lovecraftian style Uh, galactic level threat that's going on. Um, but this plays in tense situations where you're getting kind of brief glimpses of it or when something seems 
seems a little off, but it's kind of early on. Um, and so I think the instrumentation and the pace of it matches that context pretty well. Um, I love, love, love the strings in the soundtrack so much. I think Ryan Ike does an excellent job with them. Uh, his, his main instrument is piano, so you will also probably hear that throughout this song and the whole soundtrack, but I think it's a it's a cool juxtaposition with, and I think he does a lot with a relatively limited number of instruments. You get some nice like swells, you feel like the stakes are getting higher, and then it kind of descends and like fades out at the end. And I, I really like the kind of abrupt, like slightly descending ending. It feels very cohesive with the whole idea of like the Lovecraftian monsters kind of like you're, you're fighting this battle you're noticing that something's wrong and then you're kind of slowly descending into madness or something so i just think it's a great song and i love the title and there you go so that's that one um fish force i like the lyrics i definitely got the image of a very different type of villainy and i love having these two next to each other <laughs> because this is very like kind of in your face like saturday morning 90s cartoon probably a team rocket parody um yes <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's still entertaining and it, it almost has kind of like some slight musical theater vibes to it i think too um and then i like i like the there's kind of a little bit of like a prog rock beat in the middle of fish force before returning to the we are fish force um that was really entertaining. So I I just very much like having these two next to each other to contrast each other. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is a fun block. Probably one of my favorites of the episode. I just kind of, I love the instrumentation and the first song, The Shadows of Her Loathing. And Fish Force is just fun, but then it also has like a really cool instrumentation, especially at the middle part. Mm-hmm. Okay, I guess I'll go next. Um, boy, do I never get tired of Ryan Ike's music. Um, I, I was such a fan because he, he so nailed like that spaghetti Western sound in West of Loathing. Um, and then they switched over to this Lovecraftian world of stick people. And he, he got it again. It's a totally different sound. Um, but uh, the use of the cello in this song and like Hillary said, like there's the instrumentation that you'll hear here is like throughout the soundtrack, but uh, the cello there's like really, really brings like the drama and the intensity and it, it just perfect, perfectly accompanies the other instruments to deliver this song that works so well on like every level on like what it's setting out to accomplish. Um, and really the only thing that can make it better is just giving it an incredible title, uh, but it has that too. <laughs> And one thing, if you don't mind me adding, one really cool thing about the Shadows of Loathing soundtrack, because yeah. I love talking about the soundtrack. So I don't think you get it so much with this track, but some of the other, like some of the battle, repeating battle themes um, that come up, they're actually dynamic, which I think is always a really cool thing to include in the game. And I think that might be part of the reason why he stuck with this kind of like, mostly strings and piano, kind of like, limited instrumentation is because um, if you play a jazz agent you're, you have abilities that can actually affect the music in the background of the battle um, so you can add like a drum roll you can add some booming timpani my favorite is that you can add a saxophone line that's just really kind of all over the place and improvisational and jazzy and that actually dem it's it's damage over time it damages your enemies every turn it's fantastic. that it's playing <clears throat> that is really clever <laughs> yeah um yes thanks for adding that I, I always love that aspect too uh as for fish force fish force uh it's sure something um i it's one of those songs i enjoy it i i wouldn't put it on a playlist i think i think it's it, it's so specific to what it's trying to do. Like, I don't think it works for casual listening, at least not for me. But it's so it's so clear they were going for like this over the top, like cheesy, like you said, uh, Team Rocket sound. And it, they, I mean, they totally nailed it. Uh, the music's great. The singers are talented, and I, I really like how they 
they d play and sing their roles like like they're serious about it. There's like, conviction like, there. There's that's yes. a good word. Yeah, <laughs> like the, they are convicted. They're convicted? <laughs> that's not the word. That's not the word. There is conviction. Yes. Sorry, you threw me off. I'm sorry. Well, they are villains to their very core. Maybe they could be convicted. <laughs> well, they probably should be. What they yes. do. Anyway, conviction. <laughs> Um, but they're still clearly having fun with it. Um, I, I I am I have zero doubts that this song is going to hit differently and mean uh, you're going to hear something way different if you've played the game and have the context outside of my you know external context looking into it. But it was fun. It, it's it's a fun choice and very very unexpected. It makes me curious about how it's integrated with the rest of the soundtrack because in a game that. You know, it's probably a little bit of a parody, probably a little bit tongue in cheek, at least like story wise, you know, because it's an arcade. Yeah. Like it's probably a little, you know, a little bit of humor, a little bit of satire, a little bit of farce. Um, you know, that that is this is kind of like a, a spoofy song. So kind of I really wonder how they mesh that in with like the environmental music and like the other aspects of music in the game. I'd mm. be curious. Yeah. I can answer some of that. Oh, nice. Oh, awesome. So I've actually, uh, I have a fair bit of experience with all four of <gasps> the Green oh, Slick games. And um, I don't, I, uh, I don't want to, I don't, yeah, I don't want to be cruel to whoever wrote the soundtracks for episodes one and two. Um, I think they are more forgettable soundtracks than three and four. Um, the games took a, a major turn in um, every respect as of the third game. They switched out dev teams, switched out visual styles, switched out musical styles, but kept the main characters and the silliness. Um, the third game had a soundtrack by Alex Maurer, which was, was quite passable. It was very good. But then for their fourth and final game, they landed Hyperduck Soundworks, which is um, an Irish uh, musical team mostly a duo. It's Chris Gian and Dan Byrne McCullough. Um, they've done they've done a lot of soundtracks. Uh, the three big ones that I think many of us may be familiar with was they did Dust in Elysian Tale. Yep. Yep. Right prior to this game. And then of course they did this game, which was 2013. And then they did uh, Zavoid's Cosmic Star Heroine, which I think in terms of production value and certainly music is is one of their best games. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think most of Rain Slick 4 feels like, uh, the soundtrack just feels like the way these guys, uh, wrote music for Dust, um, <laughs> uh, which is to say it's, like, just a really good, uh, you know, focus on melody kind of soundtrack. Um, it's not nearly as silly throughout, but then there are these handful of tracks that need to be silly because you're catering to uh, a specific character or concept that's part of sort of the comedy of the game. Mm -hmm. And Fish Force might be the pinnacle of that. <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys are absolutely right. I mean, them being a villainous duo is very much like Jesse and James and Meowth. Um, <laughs> Don't forget Meow. No. Um, there is that Team Rocket vibe. Um, I do like the sort of campiness of people who deliver their lines and lyrics like it's the most serious thing in the world when we all know, like, no, it's not. Uh, <laughs> yep. I think that works extremely well. Um, and sort of novelty, silly tracks like these uh, deserve goofy names. And I agree with Mike. I wouldn't put it on a playlist. And... Uh, in our next block, I ha I chose a song that has a very similar quality to Fish Force in that uh, musically uh, it's funny and it fits uh, a character or characters very well, but uh, maybe isn't worth listening to on repeat listens. Um, yeah, as, agreed. Yeah, as for Ryan Ike <laughs> and Shadows Over Loathing, uh, yeah, okay, so I hadn't listened to this uh, whole soundtrack yet. I had listened to West of Loathing. And to see the evolution in the game's choice and style, and then Ryan's ability to just completely match the the change, right? It's really impressive. Um, he's in, in. I haven't listened again. I haven't listened to the whole soundtrack, but this track 
it's okay the fact that it's called it's on like necronomicon which to me i'm thinking it's on like donkey kong which means we're going to be silly right just like fish force is silly but then the music itself not silly the music itself is like part of me is like it's way too good to have a silly title <laughs> but then i'm like who am i to make that decision <laughs> so you know i'm just i'm just some critic and commentary guy ryan knows what he's doing so he can name it whatever the heck he wants musically um it it sort of straddles the end of the 19th century and early 20th century mm -hmm. it's more it's more neo-romantic than it would be a considered um the popular genre of early 20th century which is impressionism uh but what this music has in common with both of those eras is really good chamber music you yep. pick a handful of instruments and you work them uh to their like sort of max capability and you also find ways to make them work together together um and man like just again musically um i would love to see a transcription of this um it's so clever and so captivating like I, like a lot of like in my heart of hearts i'm like if like you just get like chopin and list and sure Debussy, <clears throat> even though he's impressionist just like get them together in the 21st century and say write music for your stick figure game they'd be like we don't know but they'd come <laughs> up with this uh, wow and so yeah I, that's high praise I, I know precious little about ryan ike again i know the west of loathing soundtrack but i know he's done other work i'm not familiar with it and uh yeah i'm just a huge fan of this song i think this might be my favorite track on our entire episode today oh, i really do love it <laughs> It is really good. Aww, yeah. I'm so happy yep. to hear that. I'm, I'm happy to, to share. I, uh, what you were just saying kind of puts why I like the con the soundtrack so much into context for me because I didn't really like equate it with my love of chamber music, but I love chamber music. It was my favorite type of setup to play when I played cello. Um, and it's one of my favorite types of music to listen to in terms of like, you know, more instrumental music. Um, so that, that actually makes a lot of sense why yeah. I like it so much. Mm -hmm. Well, great choices. Uh, real quick, before we get to our next block, uh, we, we keep talking about things that happen to reference older Rhythm Encounter episodes. But since we were talking about uh, Hyperduck, uh, I'm going to mention a third thing in our show notes is on Rhythm Encounter episode 28. This is back in 2015. Uh, we actually interviewed Hyperduck Soundworks. We interviewed Soundworks. them, that's right. So oh, go wow. check that out, too, when you're done with this one. Oh, great. All right. Are we ready to move on? I guess. Yeah. You this guess. was a fun block, but I guess. I guess. <laughs> All right. So we're moving on to our sort of science fiction, science fantasy final block today. Uh, and my second track is from Xenoblade Chronicles X and is the lovely So Na So Fern. That title. <laughs> uh, the the all the titles on that soundtrack are so strange. There there's one that's like really just a mess of like letters and numbers, which I almost went with, but I like this. I was surprised you didn't. Well, musically, I like this one way more. So right, right, right. So, yeah. So nah, so fern. And Pat, your second song is. I'm very curious how you're gonna pronounce this. Well, one. I'm gonna I'm gonna use the characters as well. This is uh, all caps. Exec uh, underscore cutie pump uh, forward slash period. Uh, and that, if you know that language, you know that's from an Artinelico game. This is from Artinelico 3, which was localized as Artinelico Koga, the Nell of RCL. Uh, real quick before we get to the music, just because I'm curious, why? Why did they not just call it 3? Do you know? When they localized it, yeah. Koga, I don't know why they didn't choose 3. There, uh, Koga does mean final uh, yeah. in the hymnos language. Mm. I think gotcha. they just okay. were going for a stylized thing there. Well, that's cool. Yeah, I never really looked into that. I just I thought about it while we were talking about it. Okay. Anyway, let's go listen to uh, So Na, So Fern, and Exec Cutie Pump.
Okay, so I'm going to talk about this music, but over the break, Pat, you looked up something uh, to find out that I was sort of technically pronouncing this wrong because I had no idea what they were going for with this title. So do you want to share really quick what you just learned? Yeah, so uh, this title is using um, German, but specifically an older form of German, probably 14th, 15th century German. I don't know what the name for that is, but the title Zona Sofern uh, would translate to so near, so far, um, or so close, so far. So that's, uh, that's where they, they, this language phrasing is coming from. That's so fascinating to me. I didn't realize I'm just like, this is, it actually makes the title less strange. Mm -hmm. Um, except for the Mm -hmm. fact that it's using like 14th, 15th century German (laughs) to convey that. So, uh, yeah, I'm glad you looked that up. That's, that's very interesting to me. Um, which I guess also would explain the the language of the song itself. 
Um, so now, now I wish I knew that. But oh well. Um, yeah, so I, I may not know exactly what is being said here in this song, but just like just about everything in this game, it just it I just it has such an impact. Uh, the music and the vocals. Um, I, I know the fandom is a bit divided over this game. It, it's one of those ones where I feel like it it was very divided when it came out, and I feel like it's gone. I get the sense that it's a little less now, just because. Yeah only because people want to play it again because it's it's one of those few games that was still stuck on the Wii U and never made it to the Switch. Um, but either way, you know, like I, I've always been a fan of the game um, and the soundtrack. Um, it's it's just, it's so full of fascinating sounds and instrument choices. And, you know, they knew that they were doing something that was really, not a spin-off exactly, but very different from what was in Xenoblade and what be in Xenoblade 2 and 3. So the fact that they went with uh, Sawano for the music and went completely different from the other games was obviously an intentional choice. And for me, it worked really well. Um, the, 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 like I said, the sounds and the instrument choices are very interesting. And uh, every song with, with vocals are just out of this world. Uh, it's not a pun. Um, but this singer, like she's so impassioned and just elevates the mood of the sound of the song and um i love the contrast be between the the piano and the quieter moments and then how the vocals just like rise up and like take you to this sort of magical place um just on every level it's it's so good and interesting um and of course now i gotta look up the lyrics and see which uh older version of german they are and see what it all means but uh even without knowing that I i've always really appreciated the song you know it's actually really really interesting that this is like some <clears throat> older form of german because i was listening to the beginning of this track and i was like wait a minute just the the way these vocals are kind of cutting in and just kind of the shape of it and the sound of it this sounds like near this sort of sounds like chaos language it, yeah, 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 yeah chaos <laughs> language <laughs> mixing older forms of french yeah. german japanese yeah. yep yep um as for Artonelico. Most of my notes are basically a longer version of I don't know what the hell is going on. <laughs> um, I, you know, you linked us to a video, like a, a like a lyric music video, uh, which is like some of it's in English. Is it? Is some of it in hymnos again? Uh, There's well, hymnos, I mean, Japanese and English all throughout. Yeah. Yeah, like, but like in it's the video, mostly Japanese. In the video, it's like mostly like Japanese characters and English characters, and mm -hmm. I'm like. You know, I, I see recurring themes of like love and peace, but like that doesn't really help me feel any less lost. Um, and, and, you know, like we said earlier, I don't think this would end up on any playlist of mine, but, you know, I did ask for weird titles. Um, I, I'm, I'm very curious about the context behind it because like Pat, that even you said the same thing, like you obviously have a reason you brought this on. Um, and again, I'm not saying it's bad. It's just so strange and I don't really know what to make of it. We're, we're gonna get there I okay <laughs> well let, let's enlighten me yeah uh all right yeah i'll just jump right in sure um so for those familiar with the form of hymnos tracks from the artanelico series um the song titles usually take on forms of like uh commands or file names uh that you would use in like a dos command prompt um a lot of them begin with exec. Uh, it'll be exec underscore and then some other, some command. And uh, if you go back to the older games, a lot of them will reference like religious texts. Like there's one for like Rig Veda. Uh, I remember Emini was always really mad that that was like appropriating uh, like the Upanishads. And it's like, I, I get that. Uh, and just like other sort of weird stuff. Uh, the weirdness got even weirder uh, as they, you know, made a sequel and then another sequel. Uh, and by the time they got to Artanelico 3, they were just like, all right, like, goofiest names you can come up with, go. Uh, and someone decided that Cutie Pump, which for me, Pump is up there with Throb and Moist. In terms <laughs> yeah. Of, yep. get, yeah. Get out of my head. Uh, this is a weird word, um, but uh, this is a, essentially a hymnos theme song for a character named Mute, who in her standard form 
you know, walking around the world of the game is just sort of this very demure, quiet, sweet little lady, uh, and she's a Ravatale. And when she uh, when she goes into battle form and sings the song to put herself into battle form, she becomes a muscle goddess. Uh, like her clothes tear, and she's just biceps on biceps. Like, like think like Cho Anarchy, but a woman. Um, if I hope you guys know Cho Anarchy. Yes, yes. Unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of the vibe. So this song brings that out of her. So this is sort of like a sugary punk rock. Uh, let's kick butt. I'm a superhero girl kind of anthem. Um, and so that's the context. So basically during a certain segment of the game, when you're encountering mute, uh, both, uh, as, uh, party member. And then I think at some points also fighting against, uh, when they go into battle form, this music plays and people who played the game will complain about hearing it way too much for about three hours and then really not hearing it much ever again. Mm. There's a sort of a specific period where this was really like the song that you're hearing as you uh, work through the plot of the game. Um, and I, again, I, I can't explain the name Cutie Pump, but I will say is all the love and peace stuff is basically her being like, um, I'm going to punch you in the face with the power of love and with the power of peace, you will run from my epic ninja kicks. Like that's kind of the <laughs> vibes. And wow. they, while most of the Artanelico hymnos songs, especially in Artanelico 3, were done by someone named uh, Noriko Mitose, they got the singer for like a Japanese punk rock band at the time. I don't have the band's name in front of me. The singer is, is, goes by the nickname Au, just the letters A and U. Uh, but there was this band, and mm. I guess someone on the team was like, hey, let's get this like this like sugar high uh japanese rock band to come in and do this song and they did and my only complaint about it is that i think it's too long um if you look at the the yeah. lyrics for this this song goes on for like nine verses um <laughs> it, it's it's a little overkill i could do with there being a two minute version of the song but it is four and a half minutes uh and so in every way this song is overkill isn't it <laughs> but I, despite all of that, I do still like it. I think because I generally like the genre. Um, I do like the sort of mix of like like hyper major chords, but then like dissonance worked in through just crunchy sound effects. And then yep. the singing being like sometimes spot on and other times just slightly off key intentionally mm -hmm. uh, to give that sort of punk edge. Um I, yeah, I just, I think it's an acquired taste. A lot of people don't like the style at all. I really do. Um, it's not really in vogue anymore. I loved it when it was kind of uh, the big thing in like early 2010s, uh, late 2000s. Um, but uh, yeah, this is kind of what I hold on to. And I love that this this style of music made it into an Artanelico game. And again, the character Mute, uh, whether you like the song or not, I think you can't help but like Mute. Uh, she's just... A really cool character. So my uh, th oh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to jump back. I want to say something real quick about Xenoblade as well, which is, uh, yeah, the the vocals are great on So Now So Fair, uh, but for me, it's the orchestration. Uh, Hiroyuki Sawano has this crazy range where he's kind of known for I can do great orchestral stuff and then I can go completely nuts with weird electronica cacophonous nonsense right um a lot of people know him more from his anime work uh you know he did attack on titan um my absolute favorite work of his is uh he did the end credits to metroid other m uh which is a game that doesn't really need to be remembered but uh <laughs> i didn't know that actually d dig up that end credits music it's the best thing about the whole game uh it's six minutes of just like pure space opera goodness uh solano kills it and so uh he has a pedigree for just making really great music and i think is uh his orchestral pieces 
uh, on Xenoblade X is just like super cool. Uh, I'd love to see him do more game music. Um, I think uh, who said near? Did you say oh, near Hillary? Me. I did. I would love to see uh, like a Dragon Guard four <gasps> where like Monaka does half the music and Sawano does the other that half. That would be very interesting. That would be yeah. cool. If you go back to like the choice to sample uh, like 19th century orchestral music from the first Dragon Guard, uh, that style too kind of makes me think about some of the wild choices that Sawano makes in mm -hmm. his music. And I'm just like, like that would really bring back sort of a true to form sound. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, if they did a Dragon Guard remake and they wanted to do some additional music, they should just get Sawano on it. There, I said it. All right. Uh, I think that's <laughs> everything I wanted to say. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I was just going to add that I think the, the pump might be like pumping iron, like pump you up muscle. Oh, that oh, would make yeah. sense. Yeah. Pump up your cutie stuff. Pump up your jam. Yeah, pump up your jam. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that doesn't make sense because cutie and like she's like small and demure and then she gets like ripped. <laughs> yeah, mixed. right, right. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Yeah, pump iron. All right. I'm in. I'm in. Yeah. It's funny that you mentioned that very specific genre of like rock kind of punk slightly off key sometimes sometimes with like the very like fast female vocals um because half of my notes are like oh yeah this sounds like these bands that did anime music in that mode during the 2010s the early 2010s yeah i i absolutely i love the genre there was um neko neko 96 they did the opening theme for um, an anime called Kuzu no Honkai, or Scum's Wish. That is like, the, the, they write the most catchy music in the world. Um, and I just love that genre so much, so much. Yeah, it was definitely a fun throwback. I was not expecting that. And as far as uh, Son Nasa Fern, it's... Yeah, I know we already kind of discussed the Xenoblade X soundtrack being a really fascinating mix of like some of this orchestral music in some spots and then some very kind of technological sounds. And I think this song is just such a gorgeous representation of the orchestral side of it. I love it so much. And I already kind of said the near the near comment, but that was that was interesting and I'm kind of glad to hear about that linguistic connection too. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I love the combination of the orchestral and the vocals in the Xenoblade song. And definitely, I like the throwback of the, the Arto Tonalico song. Actually, it's, it was kind of nostalgic in a way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Totally wasn't expecting it at first, but I'm glad it's on here. I feel like we've, we've definitely had a lot of, like, I was not expecting that on this episode today. <laughs> yeah. Which I guess isn't surprising given our topic, but right. it, it's been fun. It's been uh, an interesting session of discovery right whether it, yes. whether it's why does the song was so this this could have a silly title or oh this title means something and i didn't realize it yes mm -hmm. or i wasn't expecting <clears throat> that genre of music yeah no lots of fun choices uh so yeah thanks everyone for bringing on your your strangely titled but uh interesting music um on this episode uh despite all of our weird titles and uh offbeat choices uh, it turns out a lot of our games that I have been on the show before. Um, oddly, the Penny Arcade one has been on the show many times uh, early on, like years ago on the show. Um, but uh, what are new to Rhythm Encounter are Artinelico, Koga, and Atelier Ryza 3. Uh, this is the first time either of those have appeared on Rhythm Encounter. So nice. happy to make oh, those awesome. debuts. Uh, so yeah, um, I definitely enjoyed this. I hope everyone all listening did. I hope you all did. Uh, coming next on Rhythm Encounter, in a couple weeks, we are doing an episode on lo-fi music. Um, and looking at our, our current song lineup, it looks like we have a, maybe not an even split, but uh, several tracks that are directly out of games. And I know we have some uh, other arrangements outside of that. So that'll be fun. If you're into lo-fi, like several of us are, uh, it's going to be a good listen. Um, and then maybe, maybe going the opposite direction of lo-fi... Uh, depending on what we do musically. After that, we're doing an episode on games and music that inspire us. Um, I'm expecting I'm expecting some more upbeat songs, but we'll see. 
We'll see. Not everyone's picked music yet, but that's going to be a fun one. Uh, if you have thoughts on this episode, uh, if you know, if you have any weird song titles that entertain you, or if you have thoughts on future topics or anything else, any other kind of feedback, uh, you can email the show and me at music at rpgfan.com. You can tell us which Sucker Rabbit track we should have picked. <laughs> I mean, we could do a whole, we could do a sequel to this episode that is just Sucker yep. Easily. Easily. I mean, you know, he... I'm pretty sure, I, I think it's safe to say that, like, he inspired this topic, right? Yeah, I mean, originally. between things like Eternal Sonata and some Star Ocean tracks, like, that that's what got us thinking about this. So, yeah. Anyway, um, so music at RPGFan.com is how you can reach me. What is the best way for people to reach you, Hillary? Uh, RPGFan email is best. I'm Hillary A at RPGFan.com. And Pat? Uh, I also check my rpg fan email regular that regularly that's pgan at rpgfan.com you can also find me pretty active on twitter it's uh at game adactyl that's the word game the letter o and dactyl good luck with that and how about you audra email is probably the best way audra b at rpgfan.com awesome oh uh, also rhythm encounter is not the only podcast in the rpg fan network of podcasts uh, be sure to also check out Random Encounter. Uh, that goes up every other week, opposite Rhythm Encounter. And at the moment, we're recording this one just far enough in advance. I don't know what was on Random Encounter last week or what will be on next week. Uh, but check it out anyway. Uh, Random Encounter talks about uh, new news and reviews and features on RPG Fan. Uh, I know as we record this, we have a lot of uh, reviews and other features coming up on the site this week. Um, actually, I guess I'm allowed to, I can say this now. Uh, as of this recording, I can't say it, but uh, we recently posted a review of Dustborn. Uh, we had a preview of Visions of Mana. Uh, there's just, there's been a lot of cool stuff going up on RPG Fan. So some or all of that should feature somewhere on Random Encounter, uh, but go check it out. Uh, besides Random Encounter and Rhythm Encounter, uh, you are probably most familiar with Retro Encounter, our weekly podcast of many topics uh, that's we have there's a monthly game journal and other episodes in between with other topics um at the moment retro encounter is in the middle of a game journal a two-part game journal on dragon age inquisition and then as we go further into september they're gonna do several uh, single episode like mini journal type uh <laughs> several oh wow i wrote episode twice in my notes i'm sorry um, but yes, yeah, like single episode mini journal types for shorter uh, adventure games. So I, I'm really excited about the games that ended up winning our poll on that. So I think that's going to be a fun month on Retro Encounter. Uh, you can find RPG Fan on most social media as RPG Fan.com. All these links are in our show notes, but we are on Facebook, Instagram, Threads, Twitter, Twitch. We're on YouTube. We have a Discord. And of course, our website is RPG Fan.com. Uh, beyond finding all of our podcasts and reviews and articles and features, uh, you can also find our shop there at rpgfan.com slash shop. So we have a merch shop. You can get our RPG Fan logo on a lot of things. Uh, most recently, hats. Uh, hats are pretty new to the shop. So uh, go ahead and check that out. Uh, hats, coffee mugs, baby onesies, all kinds of stuff. Um, in our shop, you can also find our RPG Fan review card collection as a 300 page printed book of our Instagram review cards. If you follow us on Instagram, you, you are familiar with those cards. So we, we have a collection of many of them. Um, I'm hoping I can't guarantee it. I'm hoping later this year or early next, we'll do like a volume two because we have a lot of reviews. So uh, I would love to put together a, a second volume, but uh, in the meantime, the first volume is great. So you should check it out. So again, rpgfan.com slash shop. Uh, lastly, if you enjoyed this episode, we would love it if you could subscribe or review us on Apple Podcasts or wherever it is you listen. Subscriptions and reviews just help us a lot, help get the show more exposure. So uh, thank you in advance if you have a moment to do that. And to close out our episode, as always, we have a bonus track. Uh, Pat, uh, I know when we were planning this episode, you absolutely were adamant about using this song. And I said, no just because of our more or less PG-13 rating of the show. But you know what? We can we can bleep it out. So 
I, I figured let's just go with it. So what is our bonus track today on our strange title episode? All right, this song comes from Shadow Hearts. The song's written by Yoshitaka Hirota. It is a battle theme called Sicking King. <laughs> Ah, I, I hope it, you're happy. For you're it happy. being bleeped out, that is, uh, rhymes with ducking. Yes. <laughs> sicking fudging. Oh, that's good. All, all <laughs> kinds of ways you can do it. We can go the we can go the good place route, sicking forking. Oh, yes. Good place is the best uh, censored words. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sicking effing. effing. Which I guess is probably what we would have had to do if we described the song in the episode. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, that's that's one of the reasons I'm like, this was this would have been hard to talk about. <laughs> If we had it as a regular episode or a regular oh. song, we would have to just continuously not talk about the title. <laughs> um, but I, I hope you're pleased that we got it in here anyway. I am. Thank you. You're welcome. And it's a great song from Shadow Hearts. Yes, so. it's, yes. A, it's a lot of fun. So Shadow Hearts fans, this is for you. Uh, thank you, Pat and Hillary and Audra. This was a fun episode. And uh, we will leave you with Sicking Forking from Shadow Hearts. <laughs> we'll see you next time. What's our bonus? Oh, no, never mind. I know our bonus track. Oh, jeez.